Okay, so advanced functions, grade 12. We're looking at um, compound angle formulas today, which is part of your trig identity section of chapter seven. So the compound angle formulas are um, formulas that have been derived using a beautiful proof that you can find in your textbook, you can find it online, but I'm not going to do it unless you ask me specifically to please show me how you would do the proof for the compound angle formulas. Um, so I'm just going to tell you about them and maybe give you some ideas on how to remember them. So these are the addition subtraction formulas for sine, cos and tan. The sine of a plus b goes sine, cos, cos, sine. So that's a pattern you want to remember. You also notice that the sine here, the plus, is still plus for the sine, the addition formula for sine, and it becomes a minus when it's sine of a minus b. So sine, cos, plus, cos, sine, sine, cos, minus, cos, sine. And when you have the cosine, cosine is the interesting one because it changes sine. So the cos of a plus b goes cos, cos, sine, sine. So cos, cos, sine, sine, change the sine. So C cos changes, maybe that'll help you remember. And sine keeps the sine. And cos of a minus b, cos a cos b, so cos, cos, plus sine, sine. And of course, you're just adding the different angles. Now the tan, tan of a plus b, tan a plus tan b, tan a minus b, tan a minus tan b in the numerators. In the denominator, it's one minus, so the sign is different, top and bottom, tan a, tan b, and one plus, different again here. Now you should check with your teacher to see whether or not these formulas will be given to you on your unit tests uh, and on your exam. Some teachers give them, some teachers don't, and it's up to you to figure that out. Okay, so they wouldn't be too hard to memorize. I'm sure you could do it and, you know, memorization is good for your brain. Okay, so let's find out what we're going to use these for and particularly you're going to use it to find exact values. So find the exact value of cos of 13 pi over 12. Now the first thing I would do, and you're going to say, oh no, we just learned radians now, you want me to switch to degrees. It's easier for you to figure out how to add and subtract degrees rather than add and subtract radian measures. And I'll show you what we're going to do. So 13 pi over 12, if you can't remember quickly, you would just say, well, uh, pi is 180, 180 divided by 12 is 15, and 13 times that gives me 195. So 13 pi over 12 is 195 degrees. 195 degrees. So you're going to use an addition formula for cosine, because that's what you're given here, or a subtraction formula to find two numbers that are multiples of special triangle values to get you to 195. So over here I wrote out some exact values. So pi over 6 is 30 degrees and so this would be 4 pi over 6 and this would be 5 pi over 6. So um, you want to look here to find how can I find two numbers that will add up to 195 or subtract to 195. So you have two options that I see. I could say 150 degrees plus 45 is 195 or 240 minus 45 would give me 195. So it's your choice. Either is going to give you the very same answer. Okay, so I'm going to choose the adding one. So I'm going to use 150 degrees plus 45. So that means that the cos of 13 pi over 12 is going to be equal to the cos of, so 150 is 5 times 30, so 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6 plus and pi over 4. Now you might want to do just a little check quickly in your head. So to make this 12, so it would be 2, that would be 10. And this would be times 3, so 10 and 3 are 13 pi over 12. Okay, so now I've got it written as the sum of two angles. And now I'm going to use the addition formula for cos. And that would be cos of 5 pi over 6. So cos, cos minus sine, sine. So minus sine 5 pi over 6 sine 
pi over 4. Okay, so now you need to go to your special triangles to find... Well, actually, before you do that, you want to rewrite these as um, in terms of related acute angles. So first, we're finding... Find two angles that add to 195. And the second thing is write in terms of related acute. Okay, so that's why we did all that practice with the last lesson. So this isn't an acute angle, 5 pi over 6. Because remember, 3 pi over 6 would be 90 degrees. So I'm in the second quadrant. This one's okay. You don't have to change that one. But the cos of 5 pi over 6... Maybe I should have a scrap piece of paper here. Okay, I don't have one. So let's do like this. 5 pi over 6 is here. right? 5 pi over 6. So this related acute is pi over 6 to get me to 6 pi over 6, right? So pi over 6, so I want pi over 6 cos. And when I'm in this quadrant, only sign is positive. So the cos of 5 pi over 6 is the negative cos of, of pi over 6. And then we'll just write cos pi over 4. The sine of 5 pi over 6. So when I'm in this quadrant, that's going to be the sine of pi over 6 because sine is positive. So it's still going to be minus it, pi over 6, and sine of pi over 4. Okay, so now you have to go to your special triangles. Um, pi over 4, those are the easy ones. That one's 1 over root 2, right? 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. And now I need to know what's the cos of pi over 6 and the sine of pi over 6. So pi over 6, let's do a quick sketch. So that's pi over 6 is up here. This is pi over 3. This is my right angle. It's 2, 1, square root 3. Never realized how many times you're going to use these special triangles, right? So the cos of pi over 6, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's root 3 over 2, and it's negative, times this, minus the sine of pi over 6, opposite over hypotenuse, that's a half, a half times 1 over root 2. Now this is where you have to be good with your, working with your radical numbers. So I'm going to multiply these, so I get minus root 3 over 2 root 2, and I have minus 1 over 2. 2 root 2. And you do need to, um, well, we're going to combine these first. So minus root 3 minus 1, that's the same thing. We're just adding two things together like this. And finally, you're going to multiply to get rid of the, um, a rational, uh, the radical in the denominator. So you're going to multiply by root 2 over root 2. And that's going to give you minus root 6 minus root 2 all over 2 root 2 times root 2 is 2 times 2 which is 4. So that's your answer. Minus root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Okay so that's your exact value. Now if you want to double check to see if you're right you could pull out your calculator and find the cos of 13 pi over 12. And then you could evaluate this to see if you get the very same answer, which you will if you do it. I'm not going to do that for you. Okay, a second type of question, find the exact value. And this time they give you sine 5 pi over 36 cos 5 pi over 18 plus cos 5 pi over 36 sine 5 pi over 18. You say, what the heck is that? So what you want to do here is you should be looking for a pattern. There is a pattern that's happening here, right? You have sine, cos, plus, cos, sine. So it should be ringing a bell to you that if it goes sine, cos, cos, sine, that's like the sine of A plus B, right? Sine of A plus B is sine, sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. 
That's this formula, this pattern that we're seeing, sine, cos, plus, cos, sine, sine, cos, plus, cos, sine. So that's the sine of a plus b. So I can just say, okay, well, that's the sine of 5 pi over 36 plus 5 pi over 18. Right? That's what it is. Now, these aren't related to any special triangles, right? 5 pi over 36. But if I add these together, I would get the sine of, so 36, I have to multiply by 2, so that would be 15 pi over 36. Sine of 15 pi over 36. So what is that? in terms of degrees. Can I now rewrite that as a sign of something that I could add together to get 15 pi over 36 using special triangles? Now this is the same as we could divide by 3 right here that would be 5 pi over 12 and that of course is I'm going to write on the same line here which is really bad but I have work to do underneath it. So 5 pi over 12 so 5 pi over 12, so 180, uh, we already did this one, right? That was 15, but I'm multiplying it by 5 this time. So I'm looking for 75 degrees. So I identified that 5 pi over 12, first of all, is 75 degrees, and 75 degrees is 45 plus 30, which is pi over 4 plus pi over 6, right? So that's what I want to use. So 5 pi over 12 is this. So I'm going to write this as the sine of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. So I couldn't have told you the exact value for this from 15 pi over 36, which is 5 pi over 12. But now that I've broken it down like this, I can use my addition formula for sine to find that value. So I'm going to do sine pi over 4, sine cos, sine cos plus cos sine, sine cos plus cos sine. Really good idea when you're doing this work is to say the formulas out loud to yourself. I know um, some people are a little shy to do that. But when you're at home, you can definitely do that. And it's really good for your brain to memorize things and, and solidify things by repeating them. Okay, so the sine of pi over 4. These are all acute angles now, so I don't have to write as they're related acutes. I can just go ahead and do the evaluation. So pine, sine, the pine, the sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. The cos of pi over 6 so let's just do that really quickly again because I know you don't, unless you have these really good in your head. So pi over 6 is here. So we had 2, 1, square root 3. And I want the cos, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's times root 3 over 2. And I'm going to add the cos of pi over 4, 1 over root 2, times the sine of pi over 6, which is 1 half. So that's root 3 over 2 root 2 plus 1 over 2 root 2. And we got kind of a similar answer, don't we? What did we get in the last? Well, look in a minute. So I'm going to multiply by root 2. So that's going to be root 6 plus root 2 over 4. Same denominator. Um, maybe an inter intermediate step here just... To help you like that okay and then times root 2 over root 2 that's root 6 plus root 2 over 4 what did we get on the last one it was close you're going to find that a lot of them the answers look very similar you're going to think oh this is weird but it's not it just happens that way okay use a compound angle formula to create an equivalent expression this is 6b from your homework it says the cos of x plus 3 pi over 2 so it's cos. So cos goes cos, cos, sine, sine, and we change the sign, right? Cos, cos. So cos, cos, 
minus sine, sorry, sine x, I was going to write it, sine, sine, sine 3 pi over 2. Okay, so we've got the first step done, but this can be evaluated, right? The cos of x, I can't do much about that, but I can tell you what the cos of 3 pi over 2 is and the sine of 3 pi over 2. So what's the cos of 3 pi over 2? Cos of 3 pi over 2. So what you want to do is look at, you could make a little sketch if you want. Sometimes that helps people to figure these things out quickly. So cos, boom, 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 oops, going down 2. So this is 2 pi. Here's 3 pi over 2 here, right? 3 pi over 2, this is pi. 3 pi over 2 is 0, so the cos of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So I have cos x times 0 minus sine x times the sine of 3 pi over 2. So the sine of 3 pi over 2, sine goes like this. Oops, got to come down faster here. So sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So it gives me 0 plus sine x. So the answer is simply sine x. That looked harder than it was, didn't it? Okay, so now we're going to do a question that I think... Yeah, we can do this one first. This tan of minus 5 pi over 12. It's negative. No big deal. We can add to negative 5 pi over 12 the same way we can add to pi over 12. Now... There's two ways to do this question, and um, I did it both ways. I'll show you the mess I did first. Look at all this. Ooh, ooh. Maybe you want to freeze frame that for a calculation. And I did it in red ink, which is a very bad thing to do. But the sign, the tan of 5, negative 5 pi over 12, you can either deal with the negative angle, or you can give me its equivalent. What's the tan of minus 5 pi over 12 equal to? Well, 5 pi over 12 would be like here, right? So it would be like going minus 5 pi over 12. So if I went all the way around, the tan of minus 5 pi over 12 is the same as C is positive here. So the negative tan of 5 pi over 12. So you could do it like this and do 5 pi over 12. Or you could do the tan of minus 5 pi over 12. So what's 5 pi over 12? We'll save the time. 5 pi over 12 is 75 degrees. Well, that's a nice one because that's just 30 and 45, right? So the tan, I'm going to do, well, I'll do one of these because I think it's important that you know it becomes a little bit of um, the algebra part of it. Right, it is a little difficult because you have the um, the fraction. So let's do the let's do the minus five pi over twelve. So this is equal to the tan, and we'll do both negatives. So minus pi over four minus pi over six. Right? So this is forty five and thirty. So minus forty five and minus thirty will give me minus 75. So now you write out your formula. So tan, tan of, can you remember it? Tan of a plus b equals tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tan a tan b. Okay, good to write them out. So tan of minus pi over 4 minus because oh, we didn't do the, we did the, mi the plus one. I should have written out the minus one for you. Well, that's easy to fix. Minus, minus, plus. Okay, so the tan of minus pi over four minus the tan of pi over six. Now notice I didn't write it as the tan of minus six, or the negative, the tan of negative pi over six, because I had this as minus pi over six, so I'm just subtracting them. It's all those little tricky things. If you stick to the positive ones, that you probably wouldn't make the same mistake on. Okay, so the tan of minus pi over 4 minus the tan of pi over 6 all over 1. 
Now this was minus, so it's going to be plus here. So it's the tan of minus pi over 4, the tan of pi over 6. So now I've got it all written up, I need to look at this part here, the tan of minus pi over 4. That's the same thing as the negative tan of pi over 4. So here we are writing it as a positive related acute angle. The negative tan of pi over 4 minus the tan of pi over 6 divided by 1 plus the tan of negative 4 sorry, negative pi over 4, so that's the negative tan of pi over 4 tan pi over 6. Okay, so the tan of pi over 4, that's 1, right? Let's just do that quickly for you. So you have 1, 1, square root 2, this is pi over 4. So tan of pi over 4 is equal to 1, and the tan of pi over 6 over 6, it's this little one up here again. So pi over 6, you'll get really good at drawing these fast, right? The tan of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. Tan pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. So I'm all set to plug everything in now. So the negative tan of pi over 4 is simply negative 1 minus the tan of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3 and I'm dividing by 1 minus tan of pi over 4 is 1, and the tan of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. Okay, so in order for you to continue with this, you need to um, find a common denominator here in the numerator and divide by what's in the denominator. So I'm going to make it over root 3. So minus 1 will be minus root 3 over root 3, minus 1 over root 3. So that's my numerator. I'm just going to keep it like this for a second here for you. So 1 minus 1 over root 3, that's going to be root 3 minus 1 over root 3. Okay, so I just found a common denominator here. I made this root 3 over root 3. So root 3 minus 1 over root 3. So I'm just going to bring it over here now so we come up. So that gives me this, right? So I keep this, minus root 3 minus 1 over square root 3. And I'm going to divide by this, denom this so which is in the denominator. So I'm going to flip and multiply. Invert and multiply. There, like that. And you can see we're going to cancel these out. And now I have minus root 3 minus 1 over root 3 minus 1. And now you're going to multiply by the conjugate. I don't know if you've talked about that before, but the conjugate of root 3 minus 1 is root 3 plus 1. So you have to do this to simplify it properly. And then you have to be careful because it's like multiplying two binomials. So I have to do minus root 3 times root 3 is minus 3. Minus root 3 times 1 is minus root 3 minus another root 3 minus 1. That's my numerator. And in the denominator, I have root 3 times root 3, which is 3. And then I have plus root 3 minus root 3 minus 1. So we're still simplifying here. So I have root 3, uh, sorry, minus 3 minus 1, that's minus 4, minus 2 root 3s, all over 3 minus 1, which is 2. And now I can divide 2 into both of these. You remember, you can't divide just into one of them. So I divide this by 2 and this by 2, and that gets rid of this. So that gives me minus 2 minus root 3. And that's the correct answer. If you have trouble seeing this part going from here to here, you can think of it like this, right? This is minus 4 over 2 minus 2 root 3 over 2. It would be like me saying, what's 1 plus 3 all over 4? And you'd say, oh, that's the same as a quarter plus 3 quarters. You have no problem seeing that. 
So you should have no problem seeing this. So the two goes into here minus two times, and this divides into this one, one, and I get this answer. Okay, so that, that's a really long question, and um, it's doable, but you have to be careful. Take your time. Watch the signs. Um, don't get mixed up in, in the negatives. And again, you could try it again using this formula, the negative tan of 5 pi over 12. Just evaluate this as the plus of root um, of pi over 4 plus pi over 6, and then change the sign at the end 